Hey guys, Garrett here. Today we're going to look at whether or not the increased costs of an energy efficient home build is worth it in energy savings. You know, how long does it take to pay itself back with those energy savings? And what is the cost difference between a traditionally built house versus an energy efficient house? In the last video that I made, we looked at what an energy efficient house actually uses as far as electricity. Keep in mind, my home is all electric, and so that's what I'm going with with here. But what we came down with, my house being a 6,000 square foot house, 3,000 on the main floor, 3,000 in the basement, I should have been using roughly 24,000 kilowatt hours per year, but I was only actually using 13,385 kilowatt hours per year. So there was a significant savings there. And that savings was 10,615 kilowatt hours. And my rate of energy cost is roughly 10 cents per kilowatt hour. So every year I save $1,061.50 in energy cost by employing the building methods that I did. And there were three things that I did that set my home apart from the vast majority of the homes out there. The first is I put insulation in the floor of my basement, just one inch of rigid foam. I built all of the walls from the foundation all the way up to the roof in ICF, which is insulated concrete forms. And number three, I installed ground source heat pumps for my HVAC systems. So the first thing we have to do is figure out what the increased costs were for these improvements to be installed into my house. The first thing was that one inch of insulation that I put underneath my concrete floor. That cost about $1,800 to do. The second thing was those ICF walls that I installed from my footings all the way up to my roof. This is where it gets complicated because there's not a great way to look at the cost comparison of the two uh, that you can just find anywhere. So you have to literally break down what those walls cost for your particular home versus what a two by six wall would cost or a two by four wall would cost. And thankfully for you, I did that. All of these numbers that I'm going to show you do not include labor. Again, they do not include the labor. With that said, the labor between the two are actually really close. You're assuming that you have a competent ICF crew and a competent framing crew. By the time you frame, sheathe, and insulate a wall, it's about the same time, or it's actually a little less time to do an ICF. So for the purposes of this video, we're gonna say the labor rates are equal, and we're just going to focus on the material rates. Well, when you look at an ICF basement versus a traditional just concrete foundation basement, they're actually really pretty much the same cost. And the reason is that foundation, you know, it's an eight inch concrete wall with rebar in it, just like the ICF is. It has waterproofing on the outside, just like the ICF does. But then you have to frame on the inside, you have to vapor barrier, and you have to insulate it. So by the time you factor all of that in, it is the same cost, if not possibly cheaper to do an ICF basement versus a traditional foundation, assuming that you are going to finish the area just like I did. So again, there's no cost difference for that basement. The cost difference is in that main floor. And again, like I said, I have a 3000 square foot house. So we are assuming that it's a 50 foot wide house by 60 feet long, which is 3000 square feet, gives you 220 feet of wall and then 10 feet tall so it's 2200 square feet of wall space that you have to build within those walls you do have windows and doors so we are subtracting out 15 percent of that wall area to come out with 1870 square feet that is actually framed as well as with the ICF. So that's the number that we are using. So within the ICF price, we have the block, the concrete, the rebar, there's a $600 allowance for a pump truck, as well as a $2,500 allowance for bracing. So when you combine all of that together, it comes out to $9.81 per square foot, just material costs, no labor in, in that at all. So when you look at traditional framing, we've got the lumber itself. We have the zip system that we would use on it, the tape that goes on it, some nails, screws, all of that sort of stuff that go into it, as well as the insulation. And I did two different types of insulation, whether it be spray foam or fiberglass, because those are going to be the two most common ways that people are going to do it. And I do this as a two by four and a two by six wall system, just so that you know the comparison between the two. So if it's a two by four wall system with fiberglass insulation, came out to $2.60 cents per square foot. 
a two by four wall with spray foam was $4.15 per square foot. A two by six wall with fiberglass was $3.16 per square foot. And a two by six wall with spray foam was $5.45. So if we multiply out those per square foot numbers times that uh, 1,870 square feet of actual wall area, this is what we get. This is how everything compares to everything else. Obviously, ICF is considerably more expensive than all of those other wall systems. But I was kind of astonished that even if you looked at the ICF versus the two x four with fiberglass insulation, the difference between the two is $13,680. And of course the performance between the two are just night and day different. So even if you go best case scenario and go with the two x six wall with the spray foam, there's still an $8,000 difference between the two. So obviously ICF is more expensive, but it's not that much more expensive and you don't get all the other benefits that an ICF wall gives you with that two by six wall. So for analysis purposes, we're going to say that you're building a two by four wall with fiberglass insulation, and you have that $13,680 difference between the two to do the ICF versus that very cheap way to do it and very inefficient way to do it. Then we have to look at the geothermal or the ground source heat pump. That is definitely more expensive and there's not a lot of ways that you can get around that if you are having somebody do it. However, if you are like me and you do it yourself, uh, whenever I did it, I was able to get those costs down because I did all the labor myself to equivalent to what an air source heat pump would be. So for me, the cost increase is actually zero. But for you, if you were having a company come out and do this, it would probably cost at least $20,000 more. So that's what we're going to use. So if you add all of these up, the 1800 for the under slab insulation, the $13,680 for the ICF walls, and the $20,000 for the geothermal, those are the increased costs over what a traditional house would be. The total comes out to $35,480. But as we know, that high performance house saves $1,061.50 per year. So if you divide the two of those out, just to break even, it would take 33.42 years, and that'd be assuming a 0% on whatever that money is that you set aside. So just to break even, it's 33 years. In my case, because I did install that geothermal system myself, I can knock 20,000 off of that, which means that my increased costs were $15,480, divided again by that 1061.50 gives me 14.58 years for that break-even point, again, assuming a 0% interest on that. So looking at it just from an energy saving standpoint, it does take a little while to pay itself back. Again, 14 and a half years, but that's a pretty short-sighted way to look at this whole thing because ICF has so many extra benefits that a traditional house doesn't have. It is almost disaster proof. I live in Kansas and there are tornadoes around. In fact, a couple months ago, there's one that was about five miles away from my house. I feel much safer in this house than I would any other type of house. An ICF house doesn't have hot and cold spots within it. It is very consistent and comfortable all the way throughout the house. Having that under slab insulation makes my basement, as well as those ICF walls, it makes that basement a heck of a lot more uh, comfortable and a lot closer to what the temperature is from the main floor to that basement floor. So it's very consistent. An ICF house is also much quieter. It actually gives me a little bit of a reduction on my insurance rates because it's a concrete house. I don't know, there's just so many different things about ICF that are fantastic that can't be quantified in numbers. But when you live in one and you have lived in one versus a traditional, you wouldn't wanna live in that traditional house ever again. It's just so much more comfortable. On top of that, an ICF house with all of the other crap that I put in it is worth a heck of a lot more than a traditional house is. In fact, it's actually worth more than what the costs were to install it. So if I ever did sell this house, I'd recover all of that right at that point, as well as the energy savings over time. And then of course that geothermal system is just awesome because all of these uh, crazy extremes that we've had. We've had anywhere from minus 18 degrees Fahrenheit all the way up to 110 degrees Fahrenheit. And it just doesn't care because those loops are buried underground. It is drawing from a very consistent source of heat. 
It, it's just awesome. So the real question is, is it worth it? And it's gonna be a yes for me every single time. You know, simply for the fact that uh, the value of the house is raised proportionately to the cost of the increase of these types of systems. Uh, you're gonna get it out whenever you do it. So it really doesn't matter at what point you sell your house, you're gonna get that money back. And the whole time you're gonna be saving money on your, your power bills. If there was one component that I would have to take away from this that I would say, if you're having it professionally installed that wouldn't possibly be worth it, it might be that geothermal system. Because the labor involved with installing that is so great, it's gonna take a really long time for it to pay for itself. But that ICF, is probably the biggest factor in this entire thing for saving energy over time. And it's not that terribly expensive. Thank you guys for watching. Make sure to hit that like button down below as well as subscribe. I'll see you next time.